Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. In this episode we're going to look at the game The Last Campfire which Shadow dropped from Hello Games last week. As we all know you cannot refund games on the Nintendo eShop which is exactly why this series exists. We pick them up, play them for two plus hours because I've actually done this one for four and a half and then tell you given the chance would I refund? Let's find out. As I mentioned, the game comes from Hello Games, but it also comes from the creative minds behind Lost Winds. You take on the role of Ember, and as the title suggests, the end goal is to make your way through to the last campfire and light it. As you do so, you'll be rescuing lost souls who would otherwise become forlorn, and each of these rescues becomes its own small story in its own right. Let me tell you how the game works. You control your character with the left stick, you can sprint, and you'll have a small bag with a number of items that can be carried. In each area, there'll be a large campfire with a ghost who will guide you to reach the other forlorn who are dotted frozen around the map. When you reach them, a touch will transport you to their last known memory, where you'll face a logic challenge. The stranger was afraid. They couldn't see what lay ahead. These are very cool and they play out a bit like miniature shrine challenges from Zelda. And the developers do a good job of mixing these up as you progress so they don't become stale. Early in the game you gain a magical flute which allows you to move things through telekinesis which then becomes one of the main tools through which Ember can solve some puzzles. Now not only will you be puzzling but there's quite a bit of interacting with the characters around you. For a brief moment the fisherman struggled to speak. The entire game is beautifully narrated and has a Grimm's fairy tale atmosphere to it. There are some really dark moments here, but also some hugely clever ones. I don't want to spoil too much, but I found that each little challenge made me feel like I was a lot smarter than I know I am. And there seemed to be just the right level of difficulty to all of these logic puzzles. I must admit in the first hour or so, I was a bit concerned that the game was going to simply follow this exact same linear structure. But as you delve deeper into it, it gradually opens up and the puzzling becomes part of the world itself rather than simply those mini shrine challenges. Upon the completion of each of them you'll then free that ember to return to the last campfire in the area. The stranger spoke hesitantly. Is the campfire crowded? Let me gather myself. I'll see you there. And once eight are found you can speak to the ghost to progress to the next place. I know many of you like us love a good soundtrack and my goodness this one's fantastic. Just check out some of these songs. done a really good job of shifting from the optimistic to the pessimistic very quickly and through this constantly shifting tone you never felt quite settled within the world even when something would happen that would actually make me laugh out loud that might shift in the next area and make me feel decidedly uncomfortable dotted throughout the game you'll find a load of journal entries which are usually hidden in these chests hands encircled around the evening fire they tell the tale of the person that went before you and it was a clever way of introducing small clues as to where to go next as well as possible solutions to some of the challenges. Now the game isn't an open world, there are transitions between screens but oftentimes you'll need to carry items between them and the learning curve is a nice smooth one. You never feel like you're being rushed into new ideas and generally a new concept is telegraphed early and then you're allowed to apply it to the new puzzles as you progress. There is a welcome dash button which is nice with no stamina attached to it so you can get around quickly carrying those items, using things in your inventory but you'll not find any combat here. It's going to cost you around about £13.49. I think I paid a little bit less after gold coins and I'd say that price is bang on. Potentially $9.99 would have been the perfect point but it feels very well polished and in terms of those visuals everything's running at a silky 60 fps and I was really pleased by how well polished the game is overall including some really nice little detailed animations. Visually it really could have come straight out of a Grimm's fairy tale. One thing I will mention were a couple of minor bugs I encountered later in the game. One was a cutscene where I couldn't actually see my character and the other one was where I tried to interact with an object and teleported on top of it and then couldn't get off. It only happened once and I haven't seen it since but yeah there are a couple of small things that maybe need to be ironed out and at 2.7 gigs it's quite a reasonable size. Overall then I'm glad that you guys made me have a look at this one. Someone popped it in the comments and I thought yeah let's check it out. In answer to the question would I refund this one or is it a keeper? Well I'd say absolutely I would not refund this game. 
it's well worth the price they're asking and it's a delightfully unusual and intelligent adventure title. If you're interested it's going to take you around about 7 hours to complete it. As always with these mini reviews if you have any questions then do pop them down below. Let me know if you're interested in this one and thanks to whoever it was that told me to check it out. It's well worth it. A big thanks to our patrons who support us each and every month and as always for all things Switch all the time keep it Switch up. Cheers guys. See ya.